Welcome to Stories from the 3 Billion Under 30, featuring interviews with world-class millennials as well as the celebrities, Fortune 500 executives, and mentors that guide us. Welcome to yet another episode of Stories from the 3 Billion Under 30. I have Jason Gagnard. Did I say that You did, you did. It wasn't yeah. bad. It wasn't bad. We How would you say it? It's, well, it depends. <laughs> it's French. So, um, it usually, yeah, usually just Gaynard is fine. Um, so you were pretty cool. But there was an extra G there. Well, Gagnard is where, like, <laughs> if you were in France <laughs> and I was trying to impress a lady, that's how you say it. But uh, you were close. Okay. You got a pass. Got okay. it. So we got Jason here. <laughs> and Jason has the, the Mastermind brand. So Mastermind Dinners, Mastermind, Mastermind Talks, Talks. Yeah. you know, book about the Mastermind Dinners, yeah. which was awesome. Very I short. It. Yes. But like, like, compact. Yes. Compact is a much better word than short. <laughs> Effective. <laughs> Uh, and then obviously your event series, yeah. which is bringing together the top of the top in the marketing world and the author world, uh, in the entrepreneurial space, and literally just a who's who of your events. But I also have seen from the various pictures that get posted online and pe you know people that we know mutually that tell me about your experience that it is one of the most highly curated uh, experiences you you go into painstaking detail and make sure that everyone walks away with this like crazy exceptional experience sure. and wants to come back and sure. so that is incredible I'm like super humbled and happy <laughs> that you messaged me yesterday it's like hey I'm gonna be in New York do you want to do someone to meet up and like then said yes to being on the show and recently you said yes to being in the book like an hour ago so very humbled by all that happy to have you here I'm great I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be here like I said I've been uh I've seen, I guess, your work from afar for the past year and a half. Your name has, has definitely been up, uh, definitely been in my circles. And uh, oddly enough, uh, kind of as I may mention before, we got on camera. There was that Inc. Uh, magazine article. Yeah. That I was digging into, and I'm like, there's a lot of the names that you shared in that article that you were connected with. I'm like, these are some of my favorite people. So it was only a matter of time before we. Connected, yeah. So no one, like, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Sure. But one thing I've been thinking of lately is the amount of people that are kind of in the shadows or in the fringe that you don't know is watching you and you don't know is consuming your content mm -hmm. but they are sure for like a long time sure. and then eventually they might reach out or eventually your stuff might influence them in some positive way hopefully sure if you're doing it right yeah not negative <laughs> um, but yeah I, i've just been amazed and, and like keep thinking about all those people because there's like this whole audience of people that raise their hand is like they, they like your post on Facebook or they comment or they reach out and come to your events or they sure. say they or they leave a rating on your Amazon book or your podcast and they'll essentially raise their hand and be like yes I saw your stuff yeah and then there's like all this other people that creeps. never raise your never creeps. raise their hand <laughs> yeah you know? what are your thoughts on that and like is that weird <laughs> I guess you said creeps so <laughs> you think it's weird um, let the cat out of the bag for that one. Yeah. yeah is, I, is that like pressure? Is it nothing? Like, what are your views on no, the randomness? I, I, just I think it's, it's humbling. Um, I mean, especially, you know, sometimes I have people who I consider my peers or a step or two ahead of me that said, oh, I was listening to this podcast episode or I read your book. Um, and I'm, I'm like taken back and I was like, you know, it's, I mean, that's somebody who, again, I, I consider my peer and they spend, you know, an hour, two hours consuming more information about me or learning more about me or learning about some like kind of philosophies and stuff like that so i think it's i mean we just and it, not only is it humbling it also just reconfirms we live in a beautiful time like to have that level of impact um like you know traditionally speaking 10 years ago you and i having a conversation in a coffee shop it was it was just that i mean the conversation was just between you and i now we can have a conversation on a podcast on, on video in case may be and and just scale it to the world mm -hmm. and who knows who's going to watch it and then it, it's one of those things oftentimes where you know we see guys with like huge platforms like a tim ferris who gets like a million downloads per episode and all that kind of stuff and when we launch our own stuff we're like oh i got two thousand people you know what i mean or i got three thousand or five hundred we don't realize like to have you know 500 people's attention is like standing in a room on stage like speaking to 500 mm -hmm. people that is incredibly impactful yeah and as you've kind of uncovered like not everyone's attention is the same or there's there's this like weighted attention yes where you can impact people that can then go on to have exponential impact 
and influence in their niche or in their world, sure. uh, which has been a strategy of mine as well, like the 2 billion under 20 and 3 billion under 30. Like, let me identify the top performing millennials or people that I think will rule the world in 20 years. Sure. Uh, also, just from a very diverse uh, set of experiences, backgrounds, and industries, and let me just work with them. Let me try and identify them, connect them to each other, or connect with me, befriend them, and if I can positively influence them in any way, then I know I can positive, positively influence millions and it'll scale that way. Exactly. Which is what you're doing. Very much my focus. You're, you're two or three steps ahead of me in terms of doing that, which is why I've been like watching what you're doing. Um, in, in your own words for the uninitiated, can you share what Mastermind was, is, sure. maybe in the future? Yeah, I mean, outside the context of just the event, like at my core, like I get tremendous joy connecting fascinating people. Um, and it's, it's one of those things that Mastermind Talks is a vehicle for that. So um, Mastermind Talks, the event itself, we have 150 entrepreneurs every year. We have just shy of 14,000 entrepreneurs apply for the event since our inception in 2013. So our acceptance rate is like 0.4%, which is significantly harder, harder than Harvard to, say, <laughs> yeah. to some degree. Um, but it, it's, it's one of those things like, you know, what makes the event different and the community different, it's not based on what they've achieved. There's other organizations out there where your business has to do seven figures or your business has to do eight figures. You have to have X amount of employees. And for me, it's, it's getting a good understanding of where people are, where they want to go, um, and uh, really uncovering those kind of those diamonds in the rough. Um, wanting to, again, find somebody who's undervalued, uh, who I know is going to be a, a big star, and hopefully, you know, being in that environment, being in that community, we can fast track their trajectory to some degree. And similar to kind of what you said, I have no desire, I mean, to some people you mean they're like, I want to change 100 million lives, or I want to change a billion lives, whatever the case may be. I have, I don't say I have little desire to change the world, but I know that similar to you, if I support the right people and get them to where they want to go quicker through making connections, through being their biggest mm -hmm. fan and all that kind of stuff, the ripple effect of that is tremendous. So even though Mastermind Talks is, is very small and it's a very kind of curated group of people, um, the, the amount of impact they have, because it's like that whole saying, if you, you know, um, change your husband, you change your family, you change your family, you change your neighborhood, you change your neighborhood, you change a city, you change a city, you change a country, you change a country, you change the world. Like that's really the kind of the, the ripple effect and we're focused on like that changing that one person and fast tracking them as much as possible and being your biggest fan and, and plugging them into an amazing community because just the ripple effects are huge, so. Where do you see mastermind going have you have you thought about it or are you kind of just like chilling in this zone of no i mean i actually really super deep yeah yeah i mean well so so usually when you have success in the event space the common strategy to scale um is more events or bigger events and neither of those things we want to do again what makes our community very unique is its intimacy so you know the curation of of the group to this point has been again very kind of strenuous to some degree uh, and very kind of strict. We've had a specific type of person we were we were looking for. The next evolution um, of that is, um, and I don't have. Funny thing is, I, I used to be hard on myself. Like I, I don't have a three-year plan or a five-year plan for mastermind talks. Like literally, one I do one event a year. I put everything I have into it. And the nice thing about it is because it's very kind of project-based to some degree. When the event is done. I take an opportunity to kind of sit and consider, do I want to do this again? Do I feel like I can raise the bar again? Does this still excite me? Because the minute I'm no longer engaged is the minute this is mm -hmm. just kind of done, which is very different than like, you know, past businesses I had where I had all these kind of, you know, plans and all that kind of stuff and nothing ever goes yeah. planned. But you'll be done as long as you drop 60 points in your last game. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of my, my thing is like I do the event after the event's done. It's, it's like... Mastermind Talks is on lease with the opportunity to renew. Like it's it's something I do that I get tremendous joy from, but I'm always checking in and then co constantly kind of assessing, do I want to do this again and all that kind of stuff. The answer has always been yes, um, but it's it's very different than the business I created before where I, you know, after seven years of being an entrepreneur and I was making a tremendous amount of money in that business, I realized I built a business I hated to enable me to buy things I didn't need to impress people I didn't even like. And I felt like I was just stuck on this hamster wheel where I couldn't get off. So that's my different approach with kind of mastermind talks to some degree. But I mean, so as far as the future is is concerned, like the core focus always is just 
um, increasing the, the caliber of people in attendance. You know, not necessarily based on you know how big they are of names now, but how much potential I, I see in them and uh, how they fit within the community um, and that kind of stuff. And our new kind of requirement, not requirements, but we've thought a lot about this recently because historically, how you got into the event, you had to be an entrepreneur. Um, businesses ranged from maybe $500,000 a year on the low end to maybe $400 million and kind of everything in between. Um, and uh, really, when I f did the first event, I had a hard time identifying who I wanted to have at the event. Because again, there's other organizations where your business has to be a certain size, all that kind of stuff. But you know, I know some people who have $100 million businesses that I wouldn't want to spend time with because they're, they're miserable or their lives you know, are terrible, or whatever the case may be. They're just, not just my markers of success. Um, so for our first event, how it worked is uh, we had 4,200 entrepreneurs apply. I went through every single application one by one. Those who I thought were the right fit, I'd send them an invitation. When they secured their spot, I'd hold a phone call with them. And on that phone call, I'd try to get a good feel of like, again, are they a good fit for the community? And I had a hard time coming up with a criteria. And then I finally discovered, and this is the most least scientific method of all, but worked exceptionally well, and it's kind of the key to our success, is after every phone call, I'd ask myself, would I want to have dinner with this person? And if the answer was no, I knew in my, my, my gut, like if the answer was no, then I'd refund their money. Um, and I didn't know if that level of curation initially would pay off, but uh, it did. I mean, that's why we've had you know this much, I guess, success and this much people talking about the event in the community. Um, but uh, so we've done that for for three years and always kind of raising the caliber of people in attendance. We only let a third of the audience come back every year because again, we want to continually raise that bar. Uh, but our new, next kind of evolution is is basically being very strategic as far as the community is concerned. Um, as I kind of made mention in our other recording, you know, all problems can be solved with the right network. And um, the new kind of community is not gonna get bigger than it currently is, which is 150, but we're moving to a position that may take a year, may take five years, may take seven, but where everybody in the group is referable. So, um, or there are catalysts to open you up to a, a set of relationships you wouldn't have access to otherwise. So, when I asked you what you wanted to do for fun, uh, unfortunately, you were traveling and Was. we couldn't really get fun uh, made very quickly. But you did book a conference room in a very <laughs> fun hotel. Unfortunately, they can't see the hotel unless we get some B-roll. But I guess our version of fun today is like playing uh, a musical conference, chair. conference chair roulette <laughs> or musical chairs to avoid the sun. So if there's some like sun on your face, we'll try and edit it out in the last clips. but. That's why we're in a different This is location. show business. This is show business. Yeah, it must go on. We must keep moving to the right. <laughs> um, what were we talking about before? We were talking about, uh, actually, really interested. So you were saying you might have like jump off points within your community so that if someone was launching a book, they could go to like one specific person who could then open up a whole new world That's exactly for them. Like yeah. a whole new 150 people through that one person. Yeah, so there, there's so our next evolution, and this is even outside the context of Ask My Ups, this is my own evolution as, as, a, as an individual as far as wanting to invest in my network and being very strategic about it, is uh, as I kind of made mention, um, again, like the, the core focus of like 100 people, 150 people, and getting very deep uh, in regards to that. But it, um, as far as that relationship set is, is concerned, and I guess our criteria for having uh, people at our event in our, in our community in the future, is that either A, they are referable, or B, um, they are a catalyst to expand you, to like, launch you into a different network. So a great example of this is, is somebody who's a mutual friend, David, David Hassel. Uh, I mean, he's one of the most connected men in, in, the, in the valley, right? Most connected man you don't know in Silicon Valley. Exactly, that was the- That the article part. changed my life. <laughs> so- Thank uh, you, Kim McNichols, for <laughs> writing it. <laughs> it was Kim, yeah. Um, but that's an example of somebody that if you know him, he can open you up to 80% of that, that network. I can trace back 80% of my network to David. Exactly, so having somebody like him, again, is that catalyst to, to sure. blossom you into that. Uh, if somebody wants you to do a book, First person that comes to mind is like a Tucker Max. He's done everything, like, like knows the publishing space inside and out. Um, he's the same type of thing. If you want to get connected to anybody in that publishing space, he's one of those catalysts that can, you know. Curious Pete did this book with Tucker. And did he really? Said, yeah. Good to know. Um, book in a box swag. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> Tucker and Zach are awesome. But uh, yeah, so not only are they referable, because if somebody wants to write a book, I 
easily refer them to them because they always take great care uh, mm -hmm. of whoever I send their way. But at the same time, again, uh, Tucker is a catalyst to uh, a different set of relationships. Right. Internet marketing, kind of same thing. If you know like Marie for Leo, she's connected to everybody type thing. So that's that's kind of the, the next evolution. Have you been conscious of this since you started? Because it is something I've been conscious of with 2 billion under 20, 3 billion mm -hmm. under 30 is if I can get, you know, one, from, from like a, a philosophical standpoint, I know if I include a girl in like 2 billion under 20 who lost 170 pounds and sh like saved her life, sure. that everyone reading the book with that problem will have had something to connect with. Mm -hmm. uh, and she doesn't necessarily have a big network per se, but it, it's like a whole new dimension of diversity. Uh, back to more more of a network example, like I, I had two Olympians in my last book, yeah. and I know that if I developed a relationship with them, that next time I needed to like get intros to more Olympians for some reason, I could just text my buddy Sam and be like, hey Sam, sure. can you connect me to a few more Olympians? And he's like, yeah, no problem. Did, did it, did it. Like they're well, three three intros in an hour. The problem that, we, that most people run into is they, they surround themselves with like-minded individuals and that's the extent of their network, right? So if they're an accountant, they surround themselves with other accountants. Um, is that like-minded or is that like like-bodied or something? Well, I think it, it's 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 safe. Like-masked. <laughs> no, because like we're like-minded in some ways. Sure. We think differently about other true, things. But true. Like, we're like-minded, but we're not necessarily the, the same mask no. the same job or occupation exactly and that's the the again but i get what you're saying like don't surround yourself if you're like a doctor don't know just all doctors just, know yeah, else. exactly not being like in this, like crossing industries and the reason most people don't cross industries is because it's not comfortable it's not safe right i mean if i surround myself it's easy for me now to surround myself with authors and feel comfortable but at one point down it wasn't if i surround myself with startup founders i don't have a lot of common with startup founders or what have you, but yeah. you know, that's I want to build a very kind of diverse network. And similar to what you said, like having people who are in that network who are catalysts to other kind of networks. So I can focus only on my 150 relationships and go really deep and just serve them mm -hmm. incredibly well. But should I ever need anything for a book, I have him. If I need somebody for, you know, internet marketing, I need an introduction, I have somebody else. I have somebody who I need legal advice. Same thing. So it's just fun. Like I'm sure you've yeah. had like life, either life changing or just like once in a lifetime experiences because of your network that you would have never else had access to in a past life. Dude, yeah, I mean, I did a- Probably drop stories like all day long. Well, no, I mean, I'm, I, yeah, next month I'm, I have a lunch with Russell Simmons that I'm, I'm bringing a friend to. We're doing a behind the scenes tour of Airbnb um, uh, with Joe Gebbia, who's you know one of the co-founders. And that's also through my network. I mean, that introduction to Joe was done through a guy named Dan Martel, who was similar to Dave, connected with 80% of the people in, in the Valley. And so mm -hmm. I'm not super connected with everybody in the Valley, but I know two or three people who are. And um, that's yeah, it. I, I, I go deep with those relationships. And, and like I said, if I need introductions in any of those areas, it gets done. So that's kind of my, my focus is, is getting very, having a network that's very kind of small, very manageable, getting back to the whole kind of Spartan philosophy that one Spartan was worth several men mm -hmm. in another state. Um, I just went from a fun standpoint too, like like Craig Clemens, our friend, and he's sure. been on the show before. Like he's invited me out to like Burning Man uh, fundraisers, which are like dance parties that lasted until five five a.m. Craig's like, an interesting fellow. Yeah, that, that was awesome. Like sure. I probably wouldn't have been in that room, or um, I got connected. So I went to Evan's event. Sure. This guy Calm Mirza. I don't know if you know Calm. <laughs> and then. So I was, when I was 18, I, I was living in South Florida until 18 and then I moved to New York. Um, I didn't have a fake ID or like any, any reason to go clubbing with Calm, sure. but Calm had his like billion dollar mastermind there and invited me to go to live nightclub with him yeah. at like the same table that Little Wayne rents out. Yeah. So at 18, I had this experience where I got to like go into one of the uh, most popular nightclubs in the world sure. with a guy who's worth like 500 million or 500 million dollars. And like that's just like a world, it's not a world changing experience, it's just like a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Sure. Or like things I would never normally have access to. But I've had a lot of those like even just social exper experiences because of my network. So yeah. just from like a, from a professional standpoint, huge upside, personal standpoint as well, like huge upside. My health has been improved by my sure. network, my like personal, my mental well being has been improved, like dating life has been improved, yeah. everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll go to the grave by saying that's the best investment you can make is investing in relationships, bar none.
So. Yeah. And then, then I used to go, well, well, being in alignment with the whole going to the grave thing, I mean, they, there's, there was like a recent Harvard, uh, Harvard study that was released in a TED Talk uh, of like the longest study in history. I think it was 80 years or something like that it has been going on. Wow. Uh, but basically, they've determined that the most impactful, I guess, thing you can do for longevity is not diet, is not exercise, is actually your social connections. There's been a lot of studies like this, but this is the longest study that's ever been mm -hmm. done where started study people from elementary school to their death. Right. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, social connections are, are huge. So What's, not only from a, a business perspective and, and all that kind of stuff, but also your general kind of well-being. What's one thing that someone at home can do right now, regardless of their social hierarchy standing, to improve their network? I think anybody and everybody should be very conscious as to where they allocate their time uh, and who they allocate their time with. There's that old Jim Rohn saying that, um, you know, you're the average of the five friends you spend the most time with. And there's another John Wooden one, which is, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future, right? Very rarely um, do people stop and really kind of consider who they spend their time with. And it's one of those things that, you know, we were born into a family, so we don't get to choose our family. Um, and then we're, we go to a school where we don't necessarily get to kind of choose our peers in that, in, in that instance. But, you know, if you're out of school, for the most part, you can choose who you surround yourself with. And even those who have, you know, an excuse that they can't choose or maybe they're still in high school, whatever the case may be, um, even curating your social media, you know what I mean? Who you follow on Instagram or who you follow on, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I have a lot of friends on Facebook. I don't have them all in my newsfeed. I hate to break it to you, but it, that's, that's the one thing. If somebody's negative, I mean, that's, that's, they're off my list. If somebody yeah. you know, has a scarcity of mindset, because that stuff is, is poisonous, right? And conversely, if you, have, you, know, if you want to get in shape and you're following a bunch of fitness people or CrossFit people on Instagram, that's inspiring, right? So uh, curating your, your, both your, your like, real life relationships and who you surround yourself with and spend your time with, uh, and make sure ideally that they're, you know, they, they're one or two steps ahead of what, kind of where you want to go, which is also very important to get clear on where you want to go uh, instead of just yeah. going through life. Uh, and then above and beyond that is, is curating your, your online kind of experience and the people you, you follow and you, who have huge influence on you. So I think just even being aware that uh, the, just having the awareness that who you surround yourself with, both in a personal space and virtually, is incredibly important. So to wrap up, <laughs> and we didn't move spots this time, where can we find out more about you and about everything under the Mastermind umbrella? Yeah, so uh, I mean, the, the event is mastermindtalks.com, um, and that's plural. Uh, you can look, I mean, social media, my Facebook uh, is my name, obviously, J A Y S L N, last name Gaynard. Uh, Twitter is the same. I'm more active on Facebook than any other kind of social platform, so those are the two easiest ways. Uh, I also have a podcast where I do solo episodes, uh, which is called the MMT Podcast. Are they call those solo episodes? Maybe. <laughs> there you go. He's <laughs> carving out a whole new niche. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm pretty relatively accessible, so if somebody reaches out to me on Facebook or Twitter, um, I'll definitely respond. Sure. So, uh, yeah. Check out his uh, Amazon book as well. Oh yeah. About yeah. Mastermind Dinners. Mm -hmm. is, is it called Mastermind Dinners? Yeah, Mastermind Dinners. I forget the subtitle. It was given by a friend of mine, but it worked really well. Uh, and it's uh, yeah, I mean, using dinners as a catalyst to kind of connect people. Um, but I do share some some of my I guess my philosophies around relationship yeah. building and stuff like that. It's and short. It's cheap, and it's practical. Yeah. Which is. It's very short. It's, a, it's an hour awesome. long read. I have ADD, so I don't finish books. So when I was writing the book, I'm like, it's probably not going to be that long. And you know, after you know, uh, 100 pages, it's pretty much. I didn't want to continue writing just to fill pages. Um, so people do like it because it's very short. It's and or short. dinners aren't that intricate. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Although <laughs> yours are. Yeah. So. Well, to, to some degree. So. Cool. Thanks so much for being here. Good. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching another episode of Stories from the 3 Billion Under 30. Now, if you want to see more stories from the 3 Billion Under 30, we actually have a book coming out in January called 3 Billion Under 30. And if you go and click the link in the description below, you can get three free stories from the next book right now. Not in January, now. So check it out and follow the rest of the web series in order to see more interviews just like this one.